all right uh welcome to my channel uh today i will be talking on building a ruby on rails api with graphql uh i will put a link below about an article i i did a bit of introduction of what uh graphql is and compare it with rest using rest api so uh today i'm just going to uh, go straight we are going to build a sample blog application uh where we test out the functionality of GraphQL and see how we can build simple queries. And uh, for this video, I'm just going to focus on building uh, queries. So we're going to uh, look at the user model, post model, and comment. Uh, just those three simple model and build uh, a query with GraphQL. So first, I'm going to start up the Rails uh, new. Uh, let's call it a blog. Mm, maybe blog graph something like that blog graph app so let's call it that so I'm going to remove the uh, unit testing I'm going to use Postgres SQL instead of the default SQLite uh, this is going to take a while so I'm just gonna pause the video and come back later uh, okay our installation is done we will navigate to a folder blog api mm, what did i call it blog graph app okay there you go so uh the next step we are going to do is uh installing our ruby gem uh graphql gem so i'm gonna copy that to my gem file but first i'm going to open it with my favorite code editor so i'm just going to add this to here okay uh, bundle install running this is going to uh, add a few things when we run the gener uh, generating it so let's look at the documentation a bit so after the gem installation we would have to run uh, rails generate graphql install I'm going to copy this let's quickly run that now this is going to do a couple of things it's going to set up a folder structure in our app slash graphql uh, it's going to add the graphql schema definition add base type classes it's going to add a query type definition and a mutation type definition with base mutation class as well it's going to uh, add a route and controller for executing our queries and it's going to add a schema definition as well as uh, installing GraphQL Rails on our application. So if you look at your gem file, it added this. So we will quickly uh, run bundle install again. Okay, uh, that is good. Uh, before we proceed on testing if everything is working fine i would like us to quickly generate our model for the user we're going to use as well as model for post for comments uh, and just set up our database before we commence so i'm going to do rails generate model user i'm going to have a first name last name address host code city and country that should be enough okay let's generate for for post model post uh, it's going to reference user that means the user have a post so user references and the post is going to have a body I will do the same for comment, model comment. So uh, a user will have a comment, so user references. And a comment also belongs to a post, so post references. And it's gonna have a body. So I will quickly do rails db create db migrate all right so
So let's uh, establish associations within our model. I'm going to open user model. So a user has many posts, uh, has many comments as well. Also, a post has many comments. So a post has many comments as well. Okay, now that uh, that is out of the way, uh, we would do a little test of uh, and see how our graph here looks like. So if you notice your app folder, it created uh, a GraphQL folder uh, which contains mutations which we would use for updating, performing the necessary crude operations. Uh, here we have types. Uh, it, the GraphQL is a type system. It's typed uh, so that to avoid a validation error and the rest. So we'll have a query type. Now this is uh, default. It comes uh, with the default GraphQL when generated. It contains a field with a test field. So uh, let me quickly show you that real server. Before that, let's look at our route and see what we have. Now it created this uh, path for us, GraphQL, which is uh, like a GraphQL playground for us uh, in order to test your queries. GraphQL. Now under the query section, you have a test field, which is this. So uh, it returns a string. So if you have, uh, okay. you can start with a query, for example, and open up. And the next thing is a test field, which if you play, it returns data with hello world. But at the same time, you can still uh, remove this because by default, it uses a query. So without putting any uh, string in front to uh, specify it's a query it's uh, it will understand that this is a query without adding that field there okay so let's define our first field in order to do that but before that let's quickly add some seed data so that we have sample data in our database so I'm going to open the seed file I'm just going to copy a bunch of code and paste for the generate users Let me check this out. so I'm creating uh, the first user, John Doe, the second user, Jane Doe, uh, with streets, address, postcode, city, and also I'm creating uh, different posts and I'm tagging uh, the owners of the post user first, user second. The same thing with this user first and user last for the comment. So, Rails DB seed. Okay, uh, now we have test data in our database. Uh, let's see how we can implement the read from the crude operations using our GraphQL. Now, if you notice the field here, uh, which is test field, matches the name of this method. So that should tell you that whatever this, it should match a name. So when, you, when we run the test field, it returns a string, hello world. So it's a type string. So uh, we're going to generate our user type. So we're going to return, we need something that will return all users. And it's going to be a user type, which uh, returns a user object for us. So if we do graph rails generate uh, GraphQL object user. So I'm going to quickly do that for all of them. User for post. And for comment so the three models that we have we have a type generated for it so let's see what we got uh, user type so it generated this for us so we have an ID uh, false first name and the rest remember we have a post type so I would want to include my post so okay before I get to that let's I'm going to take this out so I will have field users so I'm going to 
use a user type remember the first was a string so it's going to be a user type uh, nullability uh, is going to be false and description uh, this allows the type schema to the schema to uh, list to give the user the other clients a description of what that particular field does so this lists all users and I'm going to uh, create a matching method def user users in this case uh, returning user dot all and real server okay looking at the query we we can see users among the list and test field is gone because I deleted it so if you look at users you click on it the type see we have address ID updated at created at first name so here you as a client that's the power of GraphQL you have all these things available for you but you can choose exactly what you need maybe I need an ID I need first name I need last name and possibly maybe city finish so we have this now let's look at the association if we want to include posts let's say uh, all the posts the user has made as well as the corresponding comments on those posts under the user type we would simply uh, include that here say field post uh, it would use the type post type let's quickly look at comments as well uh, post type so we would want comments here field I need comments types comment type if we refresh this posts becomes available for us to use so if you have posts you can include maybe the ID of the post the body of the posts and you have comments and comments can include ID of comments body of comments and we would have this so each users uh, shows the post the user has made as well as the comments the user has made so this is a good thing to have also uh, one other thing I like this type definition here can also be done in the uh, user model object itself for example we would want a type like full name so let's go to user model so if I have something like def full name of user returning first name and last name so as long as this name matches the field type GraphQL will understand that so under the user type we can have say field full name what did I do? oh sorry it's going to be a string sorry okay so let's take this out and just replace it with full name and we'll have John Doe and Jane Doe so one other thing that uh, it's our popular n plus one query uh, which we can talk about in uh, about it in depth on a, le a letter note but right now one of the way to overcome that is using eager loading for example here we know we're loading just user that all but on our query we are we are requesting for posts we are requesting for comment which initially we did not ask for that so knowing that users uh, might end up client might end up requesting for that within the user scope so we could do a preload for for posts and for comments whenever you're loading this user so this helps minimize uh, those kind of trouble so uh, I think that's basically it for posts for fields 
uh, maybe you want to add for posts but that's not a big deal you can always do that post you say this is post type no false uh, description I want to list all posts def post uh, post dot all I'm going to preload as well all the comments and so if I have post have body ID body comments ID body all right so that is it i'm sure you enjoyed the lecture uh in our next uh series lecture we're going to talk about how you can update posts how you can update or delete a comment delete a post that will be basically doing the mutation part so basically uh, today we've talked more on the query part querying uh next we're going to talk about mut uh, mutation which we would talk about deleting a post editing a, a user field and passing query to find a user in terms of updates and the rest so uh, i'll see you in the next uh lecture thank you